Harris, obviously Pitt had a huge day through the air. You had a pretty big gap in the fourth quarter to keep one of the drives alive. Um, how do you and that wide receiver group help him out? Um, I think the room is very versatile um, from top to bottom. Um, obviously, uh, we know Pitt is, you know, our number one guy. Um, but I think we just all complement each other well. Um, it's a very versatile room. Um, a lot of guys do a lot of different things well. Um, you know, I think that's what makes the room great. Nate Atkins. Hey, Paris, just kind of curious your general impressions of one game with Matt Ryan and, and just what it was like to sort of build throughout a game, see how a defense approaches you guys and, and come up with different plays in the fourth quarter and overtime to build on that. Yeah, um, shoot, what I could take from week one just with Matt is uh, how poised he was throughout the entire game. Um, you know, no matter what the situation was, you know, obviously we got down big in the third quarter, um, but he was just poised, you know, the whole game, even, you know, in the first half when things wasn't really going our way and we had a slow start, um, he was just poised. You know, he brought that leadership to the sideline, you know, rallying the guys, you know, telling us to just take a deep breath and stay the course and take it a play at a time. Um, you know, once the time came where, you know, we, we got on a roll, you know, I think that was just all stemmed from him just being so poised and kind of leading us and showing us the way. And just as a quick follow-up, I mean, I, we heard a lot about sort of the poise and, and the energy on the sideline, but when you're out there on the field with him, did you did you kind of notice, you know, his experience level, the things he's seen in the in the league over time? Was he able to make some adjustments based on what the defense was doing to you guys, like at the line before the snap? Yeah, absolutely. Um, you know, especially in those those two-minute situations, um, you know, obviously we had the one in that halftime and the one uh, at the end of the game, but – Matches, he's always dialed in. Um, and, you know, him being able to see the game the way he sees it helps us out a lot. Um, you know, he sees stuff that the defense is doing before they even do it. Um, you know, he, he's all about, you know, just getting the ball out as quickly as possible. Um, you know, I think over the course of the game, you know, we kind of seen their zones and, you know, how they were playing us. And he was just able to adjust and see them that much faster and get the ball out that much faster. So uh, I think that, that kind of got us in a rhythm. Um, I think we all saw that, you know, in the second half, um, just how much we got into a rhythm. Um, and that just came from, you know, him communicating and get the ball, getting the ball out quick. So two more here, James Boyd. Paris, um, one, was it a sigh of relief just to play again and, and be back out there on the field? And then two, um, how much more do you expect from yourself as the season goes on, as you get more comfortable in that, Ryan, and just get more plays and stuff out there? Uh, yeah, uh, to your first question, yeah, absolutely. Um, you know, it was just good to be out there. Um, and one thing, uh, you know, that just felt different for me from previous years is that, um, you know, I was just at a peace, like, from the start of the game, throughout the game. Like, I, I was just having fun, um, and it just felt normal again. It just felt back to ball. Um, I wasn't stressing, and I just had, like, this overwhelming peace um, even before the game. So it was just good to be back out there, yes. Um, and two, um, I just, you know, I just want to be able to show up each and every game and, you know, be reliable for my team when my numbers call, make the play, um, you know, block in the run game, um, do what the team needs of me. You know, I just, you know, I just want to be that reliable guy. And um, I, I want to be the reliable guy I know I can be. And, um, you know, I want to be there throughout the course of the season. Last one here, Bob Kravitz. Yeah, Paris, I'm curious what your emotions were on the flight home and, and, and the team's emotions. I mean, Ties are, I mean, it's the first tie in the history of Indianapolis Colts football. What, what is it like not to win and not to lose? Yeah, um, shoot, it's an emotional roller coaster. Um, you know, you really don't, at first, you really don't know how to feel. Um, you know, it's, it's weird, I, I'll say that, but it's also, it's also kind of a sour feeling because, you know, throughout the week, you prep to go win, and, um, you know, you, you think about nothing else but winning. Um, you know, so when you don't get that result of winning, uh, it's definitely a sour feeling. Um, but but it, it wasn't all sour just because uh, we know it was some positives in that game. And it's we know that it's some positive stuff that we can build on. And obviously the negative stuff we need to improve and get better at. But uh, we definitely took some positives away from the game. And, um, you know, I think we'll carry that on and, and build on that throughout the season. And obviously, like I said, the negative stuff will get back to the drawing board 
fix the little details and, you know, just keep getting better each each week.